Strategic versus physical versus social, or as I like to call it. Brains versus bra versus beauty. But who wins Survivor the most often? Will physical make a comeback this week? Spoiler alert, no. In the first 15 seasons, the social game reigned supreme, but just barely. Will that change in the second third of Survivor? Let's find out. This week we're going all the way from Poverty Shallow to Mike Holloway. Let's find out what the most dominant playstyle is on... Survivor! We're kicking off this week with Poverty Shallow, leader of the Black Widow Brigade. Strategic goddess, social queen, great at challenges, definitely a triple threat winner if you ask me. It's like the Black Widow Brigade. Like all the girls are coming together and we're spinning the guys around as much as we can, just spinning them and spinning them until they don't know which way's up. And then we're devouring them, one at a time. Although, the physical threat doesn't really appear until Heroes vs. Villains, where she won three immunity challenges. In her winning season, she only won one, which was enough for one person to vote her as a physical winner. But that absolute madman who voted her as a physical winner tipped the scales. 48.7% of respondents voted Poverty as a social winner, and 50% voted her as a strategic winner. That is as close as it's going to get. That puts Poverty in the strategic winner tier for the first winner of Survivor's second third. Now I called Poverty a triple threat, but if you want to talk about a real triple threat, you gotta talk about Bob Crowley, the oldest Survivor winner. He didn't get that many votes for the strategy category, the entire season depended on the pinup girl. Physically, he did win three individual immunity challenges while up against an Olympic gold medalist. She wasn't very good at Survivor, but she was an Olympic gold medalist. Until it was revealed she'd been doping the entire time. Look, I wouldn't do any better on Survivor, but I've never doped in the Olympics. But the respondents have voted Bob as a social winner with 45.2% of the votes, narrowly eking out physical with 39.7. Bob without his connection to Sugar does not last in the game. Bob does not connect with Sugar as much if he doesn't remind her of her dad. Sugar's dad dying helped Bob win Survivor? That's wild to think about. You'd be hard pressed to find a winner more demonstrative of the social game than JT. And you've got someone from the opposing tribe saying they'd be happy if you won the game? That's a level of likability one does not achieve, at least in my personal experiences. If he wins it, that's like me winning this game. Strategically, JT had Steven helping him. We saw how he went in Heroes vs. Villains and Game Changes without him. We also saw how Steven does without JT. JT goes in the social winner tier. Even though he won three individual immunity challenges, it's not even close. Just roll the clip again. If he wins it, that's like me winning this game. Shit, I just said you'd be hard pressed to find a more social winner and then we get Natalie White. Uh, you'd be hard pressed to find a winner more demonstrative of the social game than Natalie White. Russell Hans was not well liked. It turns out burning people's socks, lying to them, bullying them, and being a general ass to all of those around you does not do wonders for getting the jury on side. 90.7% of respondents voted Natalie as a social winner. When you're going up against the hurricane of chaos and hatred that is Russell Hance, it really does demonstrate how winning Survivor is not about being the best strategist, it's about being the person the jury most wants to vote for. You can't just beat him, you gotta make him feel good about writing your name down for a million dollars. Natalie did that, Russell very much did not. Shit, I just said you'd be hard pressed to find a more social winner, and then we get Sandra Diaz Twine again. Uh, you'd be hard pressed to find a winner more demonstrative of the social game than Sandra Diaz Twine again. Russell Hance was not well liked. It turns out hiding the machete, lying to people, and being a general ass to all those around you does not do wonders for getting the jury on side. There are dissenting opinions as to why Poverty lost to Sandra. I'm of the opinion that she was too close to Russell and everyone hated Russell, which is fear, you gotta be careful about who you align with. Either way, it was not Sandra's physical prowess that won her the game this time, and we didn't even have one person try to convince me that it was. 26% of respondents voted her as a strategic player, and 74% voted her as a social player. This adds a fourth straight winner to our social tab. Let's see who's next. Fabio. 
This is another one where one vote pushes it. One person voted this man as a strategic winner. This guy. The a crab bit my foot guy. Hermit crab on my foot. <laughs> strategic mastermind. 48% of respondents called him a social winner, and I'm inclined to agree with them to be honest. All because of the most important invisible contestant of all time, Purple Kelly. You see, Kelly did quit surviving Nicaragua on day 28 because she was very cold. This girl survived 28 days in the Nicaraguan rain with nothing but a sundress. I'd probably quit too. I'd have nothing left to suck. I've been sucking it up for 28 days. There is, I have nothing left to suck. I say she only had a sundress, but she also had a jacket. Fabio's jacket. This jacket won her jury vote and sealed his victory in the game. However, Fabio did win four individual immunity challenges, which is no slouch, and a lot more visible than his social game tends to be. This is why 50.7% of respondents labelled him as a physical winner. Our first physical winner since Tom Westman over 10 seasons ago. What the heck? I wonder where our next physical winner might appear. I think it's pretty safe to say this is a battle between social and strategic for the most dominant winning playstyle. Boston Rob is up next. Famously, he lost Survivor All-Stars because the jury did not like him very much. Did he manage to fix this in Redemption Island? Hell no. The jury probably hated him even more. The beef between Lex and Rob is only rivaled by the beef between Grant and Rob now. No. What he did instead was sit next to two players who the jury hated even more than him. I didn't think this was possible, but the absolute madman managed to do it, so good for him. I do find it interesting that the four individual immunities won by Fabio netted him a physical game, but the same by Boston Rob doesn't even make a dent in the 94.7% who voted him as a strategic winner. I think Sophie's physical game is underrated. It got the fewest votes out of the three categories for her. It may have only been two individual immunity wins, but are we forgetting that she dethroned Ozzy, at the time the greatest challenge competitor in Survivor history? Her social game wasn't always great, yelling at Albert to pick up her stack, and I think that her stellar showing in Winners at War is what convinced people to vote her as a strategic winner. Not saying she wasn't good here, she absolutely knew what she was doing with Coates. Was it going to be fun and exciting for the viewers? No. Was it going to let her completely emasculate Coates at Final Tribal Council, where she sips on her wine every time the jury is mean to her? When I met Coach, I saw him as the equivalent of a young girl. Yes. And I love her for it. Strategic Queen, into the rankings, they're catching up to social winners, we better keep an eye on that. I think it's pretty safe to call Kim Spradlin a triple threat. Loved by most, Troy Zan notwithstanding. Physically tied the record for the most individual immunity wins by a woman. Strategically, this is one of the seasons where it just looks effortless the entire time. If you want to see a strong winner completely dominate the competition, look at my personal least favourite season that isn't Island of the Idols. For this show of absolute dominance, 56% of votes classify her as a strategic winner, with 38.7% classifying her as a social winner, and the remaining 5.2% classifying her as a physical winner. Denise Stapley is a winner who I think deserves more credit. This is the winner who was hurt most by their showing in Winners at War, I think. She overcame being on the Matt Singh tribe, a tribe that was knocked down to just two competitors, and attended every single tribal council. It seems her ability to relate to others, like Russell on Matt Singh, integrating herself into the new tribe on Calabao, and dealing with Abby Maria, earned her 58.7% of people calling her a social winner. Meanwhile, 30.7% called her a strategic winner, and 107 called her a physical winner, which I oddly agree with. One immunity win isn't a lot, but she was by far and away the most physically competent Matt Singh member. To be fair, it's pretty hard to not be ranked as a physical competitor when you're surrounded by the Matt Singh tribe. Oh no, she's better than... Angie. Shit. Physical winner. You know what, I don't think John Cochran Mr. Monty Hall problem... It's a Monty Hall problem, you're always supposed to switch. I don't trust you, Cochran. ...is going to surprise anyone here. Look at the nerdy white guy with glasses. I love him. He's literally me. 90.7% of respondents classified him as a strategic winner, despite Jeff constantly trying to upsell him as a physical threat that season. Cochran with his third individual immunity win, fourth 
individual challenge win. You are in a very elite group right now. Jeff, I don't think it's happening. I think Tyson Apostle is best described as a lovable jerk on Survivor. That's your chair over there, one of those. The jerkiness did make it so his best shot to win the game was against Monica, who people found annoying, and Jervis, who people found annoying. That eliminated social game pretty easily. He's physically strong. He's a professional cyclist and was a beast on CBS's The Challenge. But that wasn't what got him the win. What he did do was find idols when he needed to and was able to effortlessly control who went home for quite a lot of blood versus water. That got him 61.7% of his responses calling him a strategic winner. We're now on to Tony Vlakos. I opened the video saying brain versus brawn versus beauty. We're finally at the season. We've got Tony from the brawn tribe, the absolute embodiment of strategic dominance in a season? 87.2% of respondents voted him as a strategic winner, and it's easy to see why. Won zero individual immunity challenges, fought with Cass by speaking llama to her. I'm sorry, I don't talk I llama. Me. I'm supposed to talk llama to you. You understand that better? Brutally betrayed Trish, but found the hidden immunity idols, brilliantly bluffed his super idol at Final Four, and completely worked Wu over to secure his spot in the Final Two and secure his victory in the season. Next up we have Natalie Anderson, bit of a Kill Bill season of Survivor, a story of her revenge arc against John Mish, who, by the way, is one of the funniest people to plot revenge against. You've got this absolute golden retriever energy BF talking about how much he loves wine because he bonded with it over his dad who had brain cancer, and then Natalie is over here absolutely seething. But you gotta admit, she did not let her dislike for John and her plan for revenge get in the way of her game. She had her cake and ate it too. For this, 80.5% of respondents voted her as a strategic winner, with 9.1% voting her as a physical winner, and 10.4% voting her as a social winner. This leaves us with the last winner in the second third of Survivor. We've got Mike make an absolute tit of myself at the auction, isolate myself from the tribe, and go on an immunity run and idle run to the end of the season and secure the win, Holloway. He may have picked up from his moniker, but Mike was a physical winner. 4% of respondents did try to claim him as a strategic winner, but the other 96% knew he was a physical force. He was also not a social winner by any stretch of the imagination. So now let's look at some stats for the second third of Survivor. In the first 15 seasons, we had 7 social winners, 6 strategic winners, and 2 physical winners. In the second 15, we've had 5 social winners, 2 men and 3 women, we've had 8 strategic winners, four men and four women, and we've had two physical winners, both men. This leaves us with a tally of 12 social winners, 14 strategic winners, and four physical winners in the first 30 seasons of Survivor. Currently, it seems like women are slightly more likely to be social winners, with it being seven to five, and men are slightly more likely to be strategic winners, with it being nine to five. Men are also slightly more likely to be physical winners, but unless something dramatic happens in the next 15, I'm not confident in drawing any conclusions on that category beyond the jury is unlikely to give a shit if you're a physical player. It's often been stated that as Survivor has evolved, people have started caring more and more about pointing to big moves and big flashy moments to sell their game. I think this is reflected in the strategic winners having a big uptake in the second third of the show. It may be interesting in a long time from now to look at how we would classify the runner-ups of each season to see if there's a losing strategy compared to the winning one. If this community gets large enough, I'd love to do these polls here instead of on Reddit, so make sure to subscribe for more useless Survivor analysis. As Survivor gets more complex and more game-like, strategy seems to be the playstyle most rewarded by the jury. It'd be interesting to see if the ever-growing complexity causes strategy to become an even more dominant playstyle of Survivor, or if Survivor collapses in on itself in a blaze of glory, and the only way to maneuver around all of these twists and advantages is to be socially adept and well-connected. Maybe we're approaching an epoch where winning immunity is the only way to be safe. We'll find out next week. Until next time though, I've been Henry Hickman Survivor, and I'll see you at the next challenge.